Yes, we are live in my home office. I know that's exciting. It's not Disney World, but hey, what the hell. Um, so in case you're seeing me for the first time, I am Dr. Memo. Uh, my name is Guillermo Gamboa. I'm an optometrist by day, but a marketer any other time of the day <laughs> uh, by night, by any free time I have. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, today is another uh, Sunday marketing solution, I like to call it. Um, maybe a Sunday jam session because uh, the platform I use is Webinar Jam. Uh, but um, uh, today's topic is Pinterest traffic. So again, uh, if you don't know who I am, um, you know you can check out my my uh, about page on my on my blog. It's drmemogamboa.com. I don't want to waste too much time on a story like you do in informal webinars. This is an informal training. It's Sunday after all. Um, all I'm doing is regurgitating notes um, that I take uh, from courses and or um, uh, webinars that I'm on and uh, sharing them with you. Okay, so. Uh, recently, uh, Vince Reed has a has a has a community uh, Internet Traffic Factory, and if you want to be a part of that, you can check it out InternetTrafficFactory.com. Uh, Vince Reed is great um, at teaching people how to generate leads, not just like how to show you how to make ads, but how to use a proper strategy so you can actually get uh, targeted leads to your stuff. Okay, so he uh, has a membership. I get nothing for this, okay? So, but he brought on somebody who was going over Pinterest traffic. And I was like, eh, I didn't even go on live. Just be completely transparent with you. Uh, but I'm like, ah, let me check it out. So I, I got on there and uh, her name is Melissa Griffin. And uh, she uh, basically is uh, pretty darn awesome at Pinterest. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to go over her training again. I'm just showing you some notes. You know, I'm going to be talking. If I talk too fast, uh, you can stop, rewind, and uh, and move in. So, uh Melissa Griffin, uh, she uh, just to give her a background, four years ago, she was an English teacher in Japan. Uh, she started a blog that turned into a, a graphic design biz, but she just felt like she was way too busy, you know. So um, her she states that Pinterest kind of changed everything for her. So and, and uh, the three essential parts of uh, Pinterest strategies uh, that she went over were uh, to rapidly were to were to how to grow your uh, your traffic and how to grow your email list. Right. Uh, no matter what industry you're in. So she gave some generic um, advice, if you want to call it that, right? So, uh, you know, if you, Pinterest, it allows you to get more traffic. If you use properly, uh, it's not like a time suck where you got to be in front of it all the time uh, and you can grow your list. Um, so if you're in network marketing or any kind of marketing, you know, uh, your email list is one of the few things that you own. So, um, think of it as your online Rolodex, right? Uh, you have a Rolodex of contacts. You have business cards. Uh, that's what your email list is. A lot of people, they don't worry about building an email list. Uh, you know, there's some talk that you can, uh, you can build an audience on Facebook too, maybe. And that could be like your list uh, and sell to that audience. But um, I like that I could touch people with my emails. Um, it's just the way, it, just the way, it's just easier to uh, write one email and be able to talk to a, uh, a bunch of people and you know they're getting it right so and you keep track of it so so just to give you an idea of why why she she, she started pinterest because she felt like she was too busy and she just thought like i guess that's the way it is you're just super busy even though you're making money you know and she never thought she could make tons of money but in a few months her traffic tripled when she and most of it from pinterest and before pinterest she had 2,000 subscribers that took two years to, to do and then when she started pinterest um a year later she had um or 16 months later, she had over 70,000 subscribers. And two years later, um, 140,000 subscribers. So you can see how that kind of like exponentially grew there. And her income grew by 700% with Pinterest being her biggest source on autopilot. A lot of it free traffic. So so we're going to go over one of the main things that blew my mind away. And I guess like... If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Well, no, it doesn't. Not if you think about it, it does make perfect sense. But people don't think about it this way because they label Pinterest with, you know, Facebook and and they label it with a uh, Twitter and or Instagram, some sort of like weird Instagram where you can like where they also show you how to do things. <laughs> so uh, let me go over some um, myths of Pinterest. And this is again from Melissa Griffin. You can look her up. I'm going to share my screen a little bit so you can see her website because she went over some stuff about that as well. Uh, if you don't have your own website, um, I recommend you at least get the domain so you can start thinking about it. And a lot of people are like, man, I don't want to learn. I don't want to do blogging. I don't want to learn how to blog. And and blogging is definitely a long-term strategy, but uh, blogging is an, a blog is a, the other thing that you own. So you, 
if your company doesn't like what you're doing, they will take away your stuff, right? So um, you own your email, email list and you own your and whatever domains you buy, right? So if your name is, um, you know, Carlos Ruiz, I would buy carlosruiz.com, .net, um, car, work with Carlo, Carlos Ruiz, you know, um, um, success with Carlos Ruiz, um, success with Carlos, you know, something. Buy, buy it. Keep it there. Maybe you can have somebody, make, you know, get the blog together for you. You go to upwork.com for that, okay? That's a free advice for you guys, right? Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, some myths about Pinterest, right? So write these down, okay? Number one, number one myth, okay? Pinterest is just for recipes, do-it-yourself projects, and women, okay? Um, not true. <laughs> um, virtually every niche is represented, and she proved it, and I'll tell you how. She's, she's, it's got 175 million diverse users. I think that's what she said. Um, and then... Uh, the male audience is rapidly growing too. So she kind of looked up some stuff. She looked up dating that was on there, equestrian stuff. Uh, in case you don't know, that's like horse, horse, horses, <laughs> um, caring for your beard, um, fashion, etc., and all the things that everything in between, you know. So the and she was just kind of pointed out the reality is if you're not on Pinterest, your competitors will be no matter which niche or industry you are in. So look, I'm not telling you to drop everything and go to Pinterest, right? But it, it's not a bad idea to optimize it, uh, even if you're not on there all the time. Uh, have it ready, right? Focus on one thing. Once you got that one thing going, you can go to Pinterest and and maybe get that going. So, number two, myth number two, myth number two. Pinterest is a social media platform. This one blew me away because I, I always think of it as a social media platform. You always think of it as a social media platform. I know you do. Don't lie, right? Um, and uh. I uh, I was like, what? Of course, the social media. Hello, it's always next to Facebook and Twitter on the little share buttons, <laughs> uh, but it's not. Uh, it it. Uh, she said, no, it's really not. Uh, just think about it. You know, social media connects people. Uh, Pinterest doesn't connect people. Pinterest connects ideas. Okay, it's an idea connector. So you think of some an idea like, how do I fix my garden? You can search it on Pinterest, right? Where else would you go to do that? You can maybe go to YouTube, um, and uh, so you um, you have to remember it's more like YouTube than it is like Facebook. Sorry, that little ding distracted me. I know what the heck it was, uh, but um, so basically, what it is, think about it. When was the last time you were social on Pinterest? Um, social media equals personal, and that's actually the Achilles heel of Pinterest. That's what she said. So you can't be you can't be that you know. You can't treat it like Facebook, bottom line, okay? So what the hell is it then? Oops. What the heck is it then? It's a visual search engine. Whoa. A search engine. Search traffic. That means if you do things right and people are searching for certain terms and keywords, um, keywords and terms is kind of like the same thing, uh, keywords being specific terms, uh, they can find your stuff if you set it up properly, and we're going to go over that. So. Uh, it's closer to being Google than it is Instagram, if you want to think of it that way, okay? So a visual search engine. It is search engine, not a social media platform. Myth number three. If it didn't work before, it's never going to work. Ah, maybe you got on Pinterest and you thought, ah, this doesn't work. I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. I must confess that was me. It's like the, uh, I think I spend more time on Snapchat than I do on Pinterest and Snapchat. I barely spend any time there. So, um, uh, if Pinterest didn't work before, it's because you need a different strategy, not a different platform. Okay. So, so this is what she went over. I'm just going to go over it real quick. Um, uh, why you're a hoarder, uh, and how you need to become a strategic curator instead. Okay. Um, again, this is all from Melissa Griffin and you can check her out at Melissa Griffin. Dot, com, dot, dot, com, dot com. Uh, and number two, the mistake you're making on your website. Uh, so if you own your own website, we're going to go over how you can optimize that that homepage. If you don't own your website, again, get your domain, get it going. If you are going straight to, to like uh, your company website, uh, there's nothing you do about that. But maybe you could at least get more click-throughs to it, right? And we'll go over that. So, um, And uh, why it's costing you results, the mistake you're making, why it's costing you results. Uh, why Pinterest is far from a social media platform and how that simple thought process can help you with your traffic, okay, and help you get more results. Um, 
how to design captivating pins that uh, create uh, uh, casual users into raving fans. Okay, and uh, what she's talking about is rich pin. We'll talk about that later. Um, and how to turn that uh, Pinterest traffic into an exceptionally growing uh, email list for free. Okay, so I don't know if this is a coincidence or not. Uh, yesterday, I optimized a couple of my boards and I woke up to two leads from my homepage um, on my blog. And I didn't even fix my homepage yet the way I want it to be. So it could be a coincidence. It might not be. I'm just saying. All right. I'm just saying. So number one, she said, become a curator, not a hoarder. So a hoarder creates tons of boards and, uh, and you know, just puts anything and everything on them or nothing, <laughs> you know, and throws anything on them. That's what she said. So you're just like throwing stuff on the board, you know, like you might create a board that says home business, right? Or makeup and just like throw a bunch of stuff on there. Uh, that has no like, there's no strategy behind that. That's just like throwing crap at, crap at a screen and hoping some of it sticks, you know? So you got to have a strategy behind your pins. Um, try to think about what your audience wants and what they would enjoy, you know, become a curator. Like what, what do they really want? So um, remember Pinterest is not about you. It's about them. What are you, you know, who are you trying to attract? I guess I should point out that this is if you want your Pinterest to be part of your business. If you're just using it for personal use, sure. It's about you put on there, whatever you want, you know, but if you want people to come through, click through, get to your website, get to your product, then keep listening. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, let's see. Who are you trying to attract? And she kind of gave the advice, don't define a group. A lot of people define group like, oh, the people are between the ages of this and that, you know. Try to think of that one person who you're trying to attract, and it's easier to create boards that way, you know. Um, uh, and curate boards to attract this one person. Your board should, one, include your content in the first board. So your first board should have, like for me, it says drmemogamboa.com, and I copied that from her. So you got to be kind of resourceful too because, you know, there's not a criticism. All, all everybody who's on webinars and when they're selling something, they give you a lot of like what you need to do, right? That's the this is the trick of a webinar, okay? Um, in case you didn't know, hopefully nobody gets mad at me. But they give you what you need, right? They tell you what you need to do. Uh, you need to do this. You need to make boards. You need to make that first board uh, have your website on it. You need to make uh, captivating pins. Oh, by the way, this is how you do it. Get this product, right? <laughs> so. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this stuff, okay? Uh, so think about the one person you are trying to attract. Um, it's easier to create boards uh, or curate boards. Uh, curate means just create, basically, or borrow, you know. Um, uh, when you're a curator, you're you're grabbing things from other people and putting them not as your own, but like in your, in your you would put it on your Pinterest wall, you know, uh, which is the point of Pinterest, right? Uh, Number number two, be be relevant and help, helpful to your ideal audience. Okay, uh, include board names that have keywords. Don't get fancy. So what's keyword? So keywords are um, essential to search engine optimization. If you ever heard the term SEO, that's what that is search engine optimization. Okay, uh, i.e. they're searchable words. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. So. If you if you use keywords, your stuff will get found more easier. And we'll go over keywords more. Uh, and she kind of gave the example of, of Nisha. You know, she was a website designer, uh, and she got two clients in two weeks just by trying to changing her stuff. You know, so uh, bottom line is think board topics that attract your target audience. So I came up with a few board topics. I'm not going to share my screen just yet. You know, but I, I came up with a couple. Uh, let me go to my profile. And uh, one of them was the first board is my content, right? DrMemoGamboa.com, you know, because that's where I want people to go. So maybe maybe you don't have a, a blog. Maybe you're not, maybe you're just straight up. I want to sell my product stock. You're killing me with this uh, generic stuff, you know? So um, I don't know. You know, I know people who are uh, in certain health and wellness companies. So your health and wellness company could be the first one there. Um, I would still get like a domain, maybe not directly to your, that, that was masked and forward to your company website, you know, um, instead of just uh, your company website there. Uh, so I came up with a couple. Um, I've only changed a couple. I have drmemogamboa.com, and then I have number marketing success um, quotes, right? And I have make money from home. 
And you can see those are all long. They're not just like network marketing, right? And then I have um, uh, lead generation marketing. There's just a couple, okay? So I'm going to show you these in a bit. So come up with boards. Are you in health and wellness? Um, your first board, let's say you're, I'm just throwing this out there. Uh, let's say you're uh, maybe, uh, and it works, you know, uh, maybe that first board could be crazy rafting, you know, um, and kind of go from there. Uh, and then the second board could be uh, weight loss tips for for women. And then third board could be weight loss tips for men, right? Uh, and then the fourth board could be uh, 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 exercises that you can do uh, after 40 and, you know, something like that. You know, exercise for, for anybody over 40. Something like, you know, you're trying to attract a certain. So think about your target audience. Most of the time your target audience is someone like you, right? For me, my target audience is me, right? He's about he's about 40 years old. She, he or she's about 40 years old. Uh, he's got a he's got a spouse. He's got family. He's trying to figure out how to be home more. He's trying to figure out how to provide for them um, a life they can only dream of. Um, and uh, and he knows that his current uh, career and or job is not going to quite do it. So at least not uh, anytime soon. So uh, that's my target audience. There, it's a that's one person. They're in network marketing, obviously. Uh, and they're in some sort of internet marketing and they want to grow their business truly from home, not from, uh, not going to home meetings, not going to, um, you know, the mall and prospecting cold Turkey like that. All right. So that's, that's for me. All right. So, uh, that might not be yours. So you got to think of your target audience, write some things down, you know, um, let's see. So she said 10 to 15 boards. Okay. Uh, make a list of, of different categories, uh, what what are they interested in? What would they search for? So think about what they would search for. What would your ideal ideal client search for? Ideal customer? Okay. I think if you're in network marketing, the important thing with this stuff, and I think the mistake I made in the beginning too was, I always trying to figure out who want it to join my team, who would want to join my opportunity. And if you're going to be just promoting your network marketing company and not branding yourself, I think that's wrong. I think. If you're going to make a Pinterest board and want traffic, you should promote your product. Okay, um, I'm assuming you believe in your product, so whatever that product might be, uh, maybe it's skincare, maybe it's weight loss, maybe it's energy, maybe it's whatever it is. Um, maybe it's bags, maybe it's uh, whatever it is, nails, right? Um, juices, whatever it is, um, you should probably promote the product, right? Because more your your job is to get customers that's really your number one job and uh and you know if someone comes to your pinterest and they see right away opportunity of a lifetime as your first board <laughs> i'm telling you right now they're clicking away uh, they're clicking away right um so uh become a product of your product uh endorse your product and uh and then those people those people who start to believe in your product will actually become probably your best teammates at some point you got to be patient so that's just my thought. That's just uh, as I've been listening to all these leaders talk, that's how they kind of do it. So um, uh, what are the interesting? Okay, so let's see. Success example. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, another one of her examples um, got 500 new subscribers to her list. They were targeted. It took two months uh, using Pinfinite Growth, which is her course that she's promoting at the end of this webinar. Uh, again, you can go to melissagriffin.com to, to, to look for that. You could also go to I think you can go to vincereed.com slash pin if you want him to get the credit. <laughs> um, all right, so number two, um, Pinterest is not social media, okay? And this is where we're going to go over the, the keywords, all right? So uh, social media is personal content, content, right? It's about your life. It's about... Uh, I'm like, why can't I see myself? But I'm sure you were. <laughs> uh, it's about your life, Um it's you know uh, social media uses hashtags uh, so people can can find your content. Uh, that is not true of Pinterest. Okay, what what is a search engine? A search engine is not about you. It is about your target audience, right? So that's the thing about Facebook and social media. You know, think about what you see on there. Like me, I just on Instagram, I just wrote at the movies with my with my family watching Guardians of the Galaxy two. Right, that's about me. And yeah, I have an Instagram board, you know, just to put on there. But um, a search engine is not about you. It's about your target audience. No hashtags. Hashtags don't do diddly squat in search traffic. 
They don't, you know, when was the last time you typed hashtag makeup <laughs> in Google, right? Um, or, or on YouTube. Uh, so no hashtags in Pinterest. You're going to use keywords. You know, uh, even if, you, let's say you are a Pinterest user, uh, when was the last time you typed hashtag, uh, you know, create garden? <laughs> uh, you don't, you're right. How do I create garden? You know, so uh, just think about it that way. Try to make that, that, that is a very distinct, mind shift you have to have with Pinterest. It is what are people searching for? What are they searching for? Can you get in front of them? And you will if you follow these instructions. All right. So Pinterest has the smart a, a smart feed and we're going to go through this keyword stuff in a minute here. Uh, what's the smart feed? It's like Facebook's algorithm. You know what it does is Pinterest will display the best pins first, not the newest. Okay. So it thinks whatever it thinks you're interested in and that is cool, it's going to show you. All right. And for the record, you want to be the cool one. All right. So, and again, I forgot water. Instead, I'm drinking coffee. So bear with me here. A little, a little addicted to the coffee, I have to admit. Yeah. Yeah. If Pinterest, if Pinterest doesn't uh, think you share quality pins, your pins may not be seen for a few days or ever. So something to think about. So how do you show Pinterest you share the best pins? You use keywords, okay? And this is all Melissa Griffin talking. I'm just putting it out there, all right? So I hope she's cool with that if she ever sees this. <laughs> um, so you use keywords. So what's a keyword? Okay, let us let me define a keyword for you. Word or phrase that someone would be searching for to find your article or website. Um, so what kind of keywords would you target audience search for? So again, weight loss tips for men. Right, that's a keyword for weight loss. Weight loss tips for women. That's another keyword, uh, and you kind of want it to be a longer tailed keyword, not just weight loss, not just lose weight. Um, and I'll show you a way that you can. Uh, she showed a way, and I'm going to show you a way. So, so and in some examples, let's say you have blog about vintage clothing. She said uh, you can use vintage fashion. You know, that's a keyword. Uh, maybe you rub rub a web. You run a web design uh, company with the girly edge. Uh, keyword feminine website design. Okay, uh, you sell online course on how to, of how to train your pet. You know, keyword puppy training. So, uh, why keywords are important? Okay, Pinterest is a search engine, so this is one of the biggest ways your pins will be found. If your pins are found, you're more likely to get repins and traffic to your website. It's that simple. Okay, if you target the right keywords, you'll attract the right audience too. Okay, so coming up with keywords, what would Sorry, let's put this right here like this. And I keep leaning in, make you dizzy. All right, uh, coming up with keywords. What would someone be searching for uh, to find this post or product? So maybe you have a product, uh, a juice you want found, and you can, and maybe it's for for whatever they are. You know, like just you could type in juices, right? But that's not gonna. I mean, <laughs> you know, juices to get you more energy, juices to help you lose weight, juice to you know, I don't know. You got, you know your stuff better than I do, your product. So, so three to five keywords or phrases in pin description. Okay. Um, uh, and so in your description where you type your description, you want to have three to five keywords. Okay. Uh, let's see. Three to five keywords. Looking for a good Pinterest. Look for, get, try this trick and we're going to, I'm going to share my screen. Now. So go to Pinterest search bar. I'm just going to talk about it first. Okay. Uh, don't just use one word. You want a long-tailed keyword that's a few words or more and a few words and more specific. So instead of weight loss, weight loss for men, more specific, weight loss for men over 40, right? Something like that. Uh, uh, Pinterest will show you some other relevant words to go with it. Um, show, shows them and it shows them because they're popular. Okay. It doesn't just show them randomly. So I looked up network marketing and then it had like a drop down. It had like quotes, tips, success, recruiting. Those were the top, you know? Um, and so I wanted to, um, to, uh, show you that real quick, how you could do that. Okay. So let me see if I can share my screen. I'm just going to share the whole screen. Hope you don't mind. Okay. So. Uh, if you go to search here, uh, you can see I was looking up Melissa Griffin. Um, but if you go to, let's say you type in weight loss. 
So it's already giving you stuff, but you hit weight loss. And you could just look at it like that if you want to. Um, and uh, hopefully you can see my screen. But then if you hit enter with weight loss, and it's going to take a little bit because we're on this webinar, it's going to sh show like these. Um, oh, it didn't do it. But usually it shows like these examples underneath. Let's try again. Uh, so, you, but you can see here, so motivation tips before and after, and these are the same ones that would show. They're like these little boxes that show why it didn't do it this time. I don't know, but you see weight loss, motivation, weight loss, tips, weight loss, before and after weight loss, recipes, weight loss, smoothies. Okay. So, um, those are better keywords than just weight loss. Cause I mean, you know how many people are searching just weight loss, but if you get somebody who's like, you know, man, I really wish I, I could think of a good smoothie to make, right. Uh, that doesn't help me gain weight, you know? So. That doesn't let me get, you know, get bigger. So, you know, uh, those of you who like, look at this, the weight loss before and after. So you, these are, these are, all these boards can be made. You can make all these boards. Weight loss, your first one could be your company. Let's say you're uh, in Plexus, all right? So your first one could be uh, about Plexus. You don't have, I wouldn't write Plexus on there. I probably would write um, uh, something relevant to maybe like a challenge or something or, but it's going to go to your website, right? Uh, hopefully you have a domain and all that, like I said. But let's say you're in Plexus. Then you want to make these boards, right? Weight loss motivation, right? You can have motivational stuff there to help people get going. Weight loss tips, right? Weight loss before and after. Uh, weight loss recipes and weight loss smoothies. And you could take this a step further, So, um, which is what I did. So then I wrote like weight loss tips like this. Let's see. This is what I would do. I write weight loss tips. Okay. See? Weight loss tips for women. Weight loss tips for teens. Weight loss tips for quick. Tips quick. I don't know what that means. Uh, so... So if I hit weight loss tips and hit enter, let's see if I get those boxes. I don't know why I didn't do it last time. Yeah, so this is see for women, for teens, for obese, weight loss tips running quick, you know. So you can hit any of these. So like weight loss tips that work, you know, and I think according to Melissa, these are in order of like uh, relevancy, right? So um, let's say, say I want to hit um, that work, right? So you can make all these boards, all right? I just want to point this out to you, all right? Um, let's try something else. Let's try, um, let's try oily skin treatment. I have oily skin. Oily skin, enter. Hit enter, and you're going to get some ideas. Um, you know, I saw one there already. How to, I don't know what this says. Let's see, how to, how to get rid of oily skin. So that's one. Oily skin care, oily skin remedy, oily skin exfoliation. You know, let's hit that one. And you're going to have tips, you know, these things. You could pin them on that board, right? You can have your own stuff, but you could pin other things too, right? That way you could be found. So you can see there's more, you know, face, oily skin exfoliation, facial scrub, you know. <laughs> so the possibilities are endless. What are people searching for? That's what you want to think. That's your keywords. Those are your boards. So your boards are keywords, Okay. Um, and I'm going to show you some other stuff in a second. Uh, let's see. Let me go back to my notes here. So you can just kind of see, I'm going to leave this up for a minute just so you can see. Um, so where do you put the keywords? Well, you put them in the description. Okay. Uh, oops, what the heck is going on here? Sorry guys. I don't know. I don't want you Excel spreadsheet. I want my Google. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, you can, um, I'm sorry, lost my, uh, you put them in the, in the description. So if you, if you look right here, like this one, uh, got oily skin, you know, uh, definitely try, you know, and she wrote that, but like, if you look at Melissa Griffin, let's see, do I have her up here? Yeah. If you look at Melissa Griffin and her, the way she does things, uh, let's just go to this blogging and blogging and blogging, I guess <laughs> I'm going to hit that board and see how she has up here. Blogging, blogging tips, blogging tutorials, blog, blog, blogging for beginners, new blogger, WordPress. These are keywords. She's not worried about making a sentence. You know, she's not saying, hi, this board is for blogging and bloggers, and you can get blogging tips on this blogging board. No, she's just typing in words here. This is the board description. So that's one thing. Okay, so you're going to have the keywords here on the top, okay, as your title, whichever keyword board you want to use, and then you're going to get more relevant keywords to go with it, okay? And so I get fired about uh, about this stuff. You gotta be resourceful, okay? And um, 
So I, I, you know, this is why I basically like stalked her on Pinterest, see how she, see what she does. <laughs> so she could see, you know, um, she, uh, let's, let's take a look at that. Building a framework, the ultimate uh, handbook, you know, and then um, she, she's going to have something, a little description here. Click here to learn the, ex the exact framework I use to turn my hobby blog into thriving six figure business in less than two years. You know, um, so you want to have a good description, but you want your board to have keywords and then you want the title of whatever you're doing to have keyword, right? And then in the description, you're going to put hopefully at least one or two more keywords, you know? So this says the ultimate blogging handbook, right? And uh, uh, this, ter this says uh, blog right there. So those all kind of go hand in hand. You get the idea, right? I hope. Hope that makes sense. Uh, let me go back to the room here and let me turn this off. Oops. Oh, why is my camera off? There we go. Turn it back on. All right. Are we live? I hope we're live. All right. Anyway, uh, so. Those are how you find keywords, okay? Hashtag, hashtags do nothing, okay? Uh, so the other thing is you could look up rich pins. It's pretty easy to set up. Uh, just Google it. Google up how to set up rich pins for Pinterest. That's what I did, and I set it up. And uh, basically it just makes your your description kind of stand out because it'll put like your, like let's say you have a blog especially, it puts the title of whatever it is like in bold letters and then a little description underneath it as opposed to everything kind of being like in plain letters. Um so yeah, that's basically it. So remember, hashtags do nothing. You want to use keywords, okay? So, all right, all right, all right. Let's see. I just want to make sure I didn't end the call. I don't know why I thought I did by accident. All right. All right. So remember the smart feed? It's kind of like uh, puts the best things first. Um, if you use keywords, your pins will eventually um, appear at the top of the feed and in the picked for you section. So I don't know if you notice, if you've ever been on Pinterest, it has like a pick for you section in the beginning. As soon as you like log in, it'll say pick for you, you know, uh, resulting in more repins and website visitors. Okay. So if you don't have keywords, your pins and boards will be showed to the bot will be pushed up to the bottom of the feed or not seen at all. Not cool. We don't want that. All right. So, all right, guys, if you don't have your own website, I don't want you to get discouraged about this next part. Okay because maybe you're not building your list yet. There is no time like the present, right? Um, there's a lot of ways to build a list. Uh, I would say, again, if you're not pointing directly to one of you, like your blog, the point of a blog is, I like putting my ideas down there and writing them, but the point of the blog is to get the lead. That's the point of the blog. Uh, the point of the blog is to get leads to build your email list, okay? That's the point of everybody's blog, believe it or not. And uh, uh, so it's nice to have your own blog and just point people in that direction so they can, uh, you know, maybe get on your list. And then from there, you can start engaging them through your emails and possibly sell them some stuff, right? I mean, that's just, hey, man, we are in business, <laughs> right? So, all right, so Pinterest starts with your website, okay? Uh, getting traffic is not the goal, all right? Uh, the goal is what that new traffic accomplishes, right? Uh, more blog comments, email subscribers, customers, right? So let's talk about it in a customer sense because I know a lot of people don't have their own blog and don't really wish to be writing a blog. You know, they want people to, to buy their stuff, whatever that stuff might be. Maybe it's candles, right? So you need to make boards about candles and how they smell nice and what kind of candles are good for stressed out people like candle candle sense for 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 anxiety that's keyword okay um, what candles should I bathe with you know while I'm bathing what candle should I use while I'm bathing you get what I'm saying I hope okay so the point is then from there you want to want them to click to your site now if you're just selling your product and just let's say you're in Sensi since we're talking about candles if you're if you're sending them right to the to the company page to sell, you're going to get traffic, but I don't know how many people are going to buy, right? Think about it. People don't like working hard. You know, they don't want to click over and then click, what am I looking for, you know? So a better way might be um, 
you know, I don't know how your page is as far as your company page, but if you have specific, like let's say you have a lot of products. So let's say you uh, have skincare and makeup. Maybe you can make your skincare board, your skincare boards go to the skincare section of your page, of your, of your company website. And then the other, other boards that are makeup related can go to the makeup, um, make a part of your website, of your company website, right? And more chance. Cause if they go, let's say they're on your skincare board they click over and the first thing they see is like lipstick or eyeshadows. Maybe like, wait, that's not what I want. That's what I clicked on. You know, where, where'd I go? I'll forget it. Cause that's how people are. They, they just give up right away. <laughs> I'm not like that. Cause I'm crazy, you know, but, um, that's what they do. So, uh, so think about what your goal is. You know, marketers always start with the end in mind. You're not just a networker. You're a marketer. So think about the end in mind. Is your goal, what's your end goal to sell said product? Okay, how much of that product? Um, how how much is it? Is it you know forty dollars uh, a product? Then you um, how much of it do you gotta sell to make your goal? How much traffic do you think you need to that site? You know, and you only do that by testing it. Okay, so all right. Uh, let's see. Nowadays, having an email list is the gold standard um, for growing your online business. Okay, how can Pinterest help you grow your list? She went from 2,000 to 140,000 subscribers in in 16 months or something like that. So that's pretty impressive, right? All not all of it, but most of it, she said, from Pinterest. You know. Uh, so she uh, she made some recommendations about your website. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to screen share that with you. And I'm going to show you. Oh, I don't have my website up. Ooh, I hate that because it might take a lot of load. But I'm going to screen share again here, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, how she has her website, which I think is really good. And mine is not like that. So I'm going to show you like compare and contrast the difference, you know. Um, and so first, let me just click in my website here and see if it'll load up before I even screen share. And we'll go over. Uh, well, sometimes when you're on these webinars, you're your, um, your internet's slower. So if ever you start doing uh, um, uh, webinars, you might notice that things are a little slower. So I almost put drgamboa.com, which I wonder, I wonder who that is, right? Because I'm Dr. Memo Gamboa. So, so I'll show you a couple things that I do incorrectly. And what do you know? I got to I gotta shut me off. Be quiet. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So let me screen share. And I keep wanting to hit this red button. It's like, here, end the call. No, I don't want to end the call. So we're going to screen share. Come on, screen. There she goes. And we're going to share. Website, you can see it's pretty cool. Uh, and hopefully you can see this whole screen here. But in the top, you know, she, uh, this is Melissa Griffin again. Uh, you can visit her. Um, and, and if you want her course, it's Pinfinite Growth, which you can get down here. All right. Um, and it seems like a good course. And I'm thinking about getting it myself. I may or may not. Uh, right now, I'm going to try to do this organically, uh, which is what she teaches, but she just kind of gets more in depth about it. Okay. Um, I have a kind of a clue about search traffic because I do a lot of YouTube and I used to like, um, advertise on Yahoo. So uh, anyway, so what she recommends, okay, she has two places right in the in her homepage. So this is what we call a homepage, right? It doesn't say homepage, but this is a homepage. Um, uh, her recommendation on your website, she has two places where people can opt in, get on the list, hit button, then goes to opt in. Okay. So you can see here, uh, this place here, it says free resources at the top. You can opt in uh, to a thing. Let's see. I'll click it. All right. And you can put your name and email and it's heck yes you want that thing and and we're going to explain the psychology of all this in a minute okay and then see here this is also an opt-in uh, it's not loaded all the way that's why not point but this is another it goes to the same place okay uh and she's got a real nice website uh, i like the way i like the look of it uh, so yeah really nice okay uh, i want how it's different okay so you can see my headers up here. Uh, this thing's up here because it knows, WordPress knows that this is my computer. But the, I, have, I have my, obviously I don't have the professional stuff she does. But, uh, and you can see my my things are down here. And nowhere in here, you know, I got this free breakthrough call, which I might change to discovery call. 
you can tell me what you think sounds better. But um, uh, that's like to, if you want to call for me, you know. So uh, you can see nowhere in here is it to to opt in. So before the fold, before the fold means that I don't have to scroll. Okay, so she she has boom. I don't have to scroll. It's opt in right there. Opt opt in right right there in front of me. Uh, I can't look anywhere else. Right. It's there. Like I'll click here to sign up. Whoa. All right. Cool. You know, and um, it like increased her her uh, signups drastically. If we go back to my site. We're gonna go over the other thing I do wrong, which I don't know if making a video is wrong, but I'm gonna change. I'm gonna I'm gonna change all this here. Again, I'm not a website designer, so I think I might hire somebody to kind of make my website look nicer. Uh, so I have a giveaway an ultimate recruiting guide, um, which is really cool by the way. I'm gonna update it too because uh, I got some major objection stuff I want to add to that. I got to get rid of that YouTube sign. Uh, anyway, you can see here, I have where you enter your aim, email and your name right there on the page. That's a mistake. Okay. That's a mistake. So if you're, if you have your own site, that's a mistake. Okay. So if you're not, if you're, I'm sorry if this is boring you, if, if, if you don't have your own site. Okay. But this stuff's important. Um, so that's a mistake and it's all psychology. So what it is, is, is people commit. Okay. So, she has buttons, right, and or images, and um, so she can um, people once they click here, they're like, oh, I want free resources. Let me check that out, and then it's like, oh, uh, read that. Join over seventy-five thousand other others and get access to my free library of eBooks, worksheets, and resources from online entrepreneurs and bloggers. Yeah, I guess I do want it, you know. And you're gonna and you're gonna type your name in. So, but for me. Because people are always resisting, right? People are always resisting. Now, I got two subscribers to this thing last night, and you can tell it's not even optimized, right? This is not, it's not sexy. It's not pretty. You know, the only thing sexy on here is my face. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I created all this on my own, right? I don't have designers. So, but I got two subscribers last night to this ultimate recruiting guide which tells you something about how that, that search traffic, I just did that yesterday. So, but, so the psychology is like, if I come first off, I come and say, okay, welcome, you know, and then you're like looking, okay, what ultimate recruiting guide? It's not clickable. Like, why isn't it clickable? You know? And then, um, go down, oh, he wants me to put my name and email in. Well, I don't want to do that. You know, but if this is not there and you go click here, you know, it doesn't say click here, but but like somebody's like ultimate recruiting guide and, the, and their little hand pops up, right? The little hand pops up like you're going to, like it's clickable and you click it and it pops to an image like she does. It pops to another little like square box like like hers does. It's, you know, it's all, it's all psychology, you know, like, oh, I got to put my name and email to get that ultimate recruiting guide. Okay. um, I guess I will because I, I do want it, you know, because psycholo psychologically they hit the button and that's like a, like a trigger, like, but I, I, I do want it, you know, I hit it. I wanted to find out more. Right. So let me X out of the hand and X out of the hand. Okay. So that's the psychology behind that. And let's see. Uh, let's see. She showed a couple other websites, but I think just showing that it's good. Um, so I just kind of none use the opt-in right on the page. You have to click a button. Then the pop-up comes for you to enter your email, right? Because it lowers barriers. It lowers that psychological barrier of entry. Okay. Um, at least the perception of it. It's like a psychological thing, okay? Um, on your website, excuse me, you want to emphasize your goal. Now, her goal is to get people on her on her list, right? And that's my goal too because from there, you can be endorsing products, endorsing whatever it is you want to endorse, right? So um, sign up for your email list, buy your product or service, follow you on social media. What's your goal on your website, right? So... Uh, uh, the Pinterest traffic will see the offer and start to sign up, right? Because they're going to come, they're going to click, they're going to go to your website, and they'll want to sign up. Uh, but you need to give them direction. So she wants. She pointed out that. Uh, let me stop sharing. So you want to give the Pinterest users direction as to um, where what they have to do, right? The, people don't want to. They don't want to search around and like, what am I doing? I don't know. Unless you're like me, who's trying to always figure things out, and I'm always trying to copy marketers and and do what they do. Um, uh, then, then the per, the casual person, the casual visitor, is going to click to your website and be like, blah, too busy, or blah, I don't know what the hell's going on here. 
I'm out of here. You know, I'll go somewhere else. I go to Dr. Ramos' website. He's cool. All right. Uh, let's see. So Pinterest uh, visitors need direction. Uh, no direction or call to action, then you're getting traffic, but not retaining audience members, okay, or building engagement. Um, uh, overall, if you use Pinterest as a search engine and with the right strategy, you will grow your traffic and audience quickly. That's what she said, okay? So remember a couple things. Keywords, all right? This, this is the take-home stuff of this quick webinar here. We've been at it now, what, 45 minutes, all right? So that's my goal is to be like around an hour. Um, one, you want to use keywords in all your pin descriptions and for your board creation, okay? And number two, Pinterest is a search engine, okay? So maybe I should go, number one, Pinterest is a search engine. What what is your target? Who's your target audience? What would they be searching for? And then um, create boards around that and then pin appropriately. And then in the description, also keywords, okay? So... Um, you have to be findable. Is that a word? You know, so think about what you would search for. You know, maybe you have customers already uh, and they could tell you what would they search for to find your product? You know, how, how would they find it? Because let's say you're in um, Amway. You know, they're not going to search Amway. You know, the only people searching Amway are the people trying to figure out if it's, if it's a scam or not. <laughs> right. But they might be searching for certain products that you type of products that you sell and that's what you got to figure out. So, um, try to figure that out. Right. So, um, you know, if I'm, you know, I'm into superheroes, if I'm searching, I might not, I might not write superheroes. I might be searching for specific superheroes, like superheroes that fly or, um, um, the incredible Hulk. That's more of a specific keyword. Right. So, uh, it's my favorite, by the way, incredible Hulk, Bruce Banner, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's my favorite, but, uh, Think about specific keywords, all right? So search traffic keywords, okay? If you were on social media like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, hashtags, okay? But no, you're not. You're on search traffic, Pinterest, keywords, okay? Like YouTube. So how would you search on YouTube for something? That's how people search on Pinterest for stuff, okay? So uh, think of it that way. All right, man. So I hope you got at least a couple nuggets from this. I hope uh, you go and like you start like optimizing your Pinterest, you know, on your free time if it's not your number one thing, and uh, just so you can get some traffic to your stuff. And uh, if you want to uh, get more information about me, again, you can go to my website, drmemogamboa.com. If you need that ultimate recruiting guide, you know, sign up for it. Um, and it's a it's a really good guide. It's basically me going over. Um, uh, again, what I did was when I first started network marketing, I, I like. You know, read GoPro. I read a, I read a couple of Big Al's books. Um, I started looking at trainings from other leaders, and I put them all on this recruiting guide <laughs> of how to open, how to invite, how to build rapport, how to close, and then how to how to present because you close before you present. In case you didn't know. All right. So, anyways, Dr. Memo from drmemogamboa.com, and remember, together we can do anything. I'm gonna sign off now. Have a great Sunday, people. And